トビデオ It's May. The showers have brought flowers. The grills are heating up for Memorial Day. Movie theaters are making accommodations for the latest blockbusters. And high school gyms and college sports complexes everywhere are awash with the sounds of graduation. The ceremony that acts as the bridge from one period of life to the next, graduation has and will always be a thematic source of finality and new beginnings, both in real life and in fiction. Especially in fiction, since the graduation is one of the best ways to send off characters with some level of conclusiveness. Don't cry because it's over. Smile because it's over. This is especially true in Japan, where the graduation ceremony normally takes place in March, so forget about all that stuff I said about the month of May at the beginning. In a country where youth is romanticized extensively, the graduation ceremony is given a lot more gravitas and is thus considered a far more solemn occasion. With each one, from elementary to middle school to high school graduation, you are transitioning away from a phase of youth, and soon out of youth altogether. For most people, graduation represents the last halcyon day of youth. Right after you get your diploma and sing Hotoru no Hikari with your classmates, you now have to face a more uncertain future of what do you do next. What's worse is that all the friends you have made in school might not get to follow you to the next stage of your life. There are no after school clubs in the workday world after all. For this reason, it's why a lot of slice of life anime that takes place in high school end on graduation day. Regardless of how goofy they are, it is an appropriate send off to characters we've spent considerable time with, all with the bittersweet notion that, in their world, it could be the last time these characters will be together in the same room for quite some time. But for some producers, you don't even need the rest of the anime. For 190's OVA, you could always just skip to the end. Spring is sprunging, the cherry bloomsums are blossoming, and the last of the final exams are being passed to the front of the classroom. The studying and schoolwork portion of the school year is largely over. Now it's just waiting until grades are posted and diplomas are handed out. And for a group of five friends finishing off their last year of high school, the reality is beginning to set in. The group, which consists of Rich Ojo-sama Reiko Takagi, motorcycle riding Sukeban Kiyome Arai, sporty tomboy Mika Kado, Gentle scholar Shizuka Nakamoto and the brainless fail girl Mami Shimura now have to confront the sobering realization that they have entered the mother of all transitional periods of their lives. High school is coming to a close and they are now faced with two undeniable facts. Their plans for the future now need to start moving forwards and this might be the last time they see each other as a group of friends. <laughs> With that formidable thought fresh in their minds, the five girls plan a nice relaxing hot springs weekend in the mountains together. But even if they enjoy their little getaway, the questions will remain in their minds. What exactly are their plans for the ever encroaching future? And will this really be the last time they can hang with each other as a group? ね、次は行きも帰りもみんな一緒の旅行にしようね。ね。うん。次ってあんのかな。1995's graduation or as it's known in its native country as Sotsugyo graduation, which translated means graduation colon graduation, feels like one of the harder sells I've come across for an anime. A slice of life anime, and a very low key one at that, revolving around a group of girls that most viewers might not have larger context towards, being upset that life is moving forward and may result in them not being friends anymore. You can probably guess, but an anime like Graduation never made it over here in the States, even in the grab as many licenses as possible era of the anime boom. And even if there was a localization attempt, as evidenced by ANN showing a cast list for a dub that might have only aired on the satellite network Animax, it never got a physical release because they knew this concept was unmarketable to Americans hungry for the next Trigun DVD. This is an anime that has the phrase for Japan only scribbled all over it, and we'll see why in a second. 
But even then, I can only imagine that this was still pretty niche. Slice of Life anime had been around both before and during that period, but they had yet to really flower into the juggernaut they would become in the aughts. Plus, like I said at the top, the high school graduation in anime is best reserved for the end of a series to send off characters we've grown to know and love. What this OVA is trying to do is introduce the characters solely for the sake of sending them off. Can you even make this work? Honestly, I think graduation does make it work. By approaching the conceit with a lot of thought and care, the team behind graduation makes what could have been just extra material for a franchise into something genuinely moving. And the best part is that you don't even need to be a high schooler or a recent graduate to get the most out of what this anime is handing down to you. But I'm getting ahead here. Let's backspace a bit and look back into those words, extra material and franchise. We can't attend the ceremony without finishing up our coursework after all. We begin three years prior to the OVA's release in 1992, where in Japan's PC gaming community, a new genre is beginning to emerge the Raising Simulator game, or Raising Project game. A subgenre of the then-growing life simulator genre of game, the Raising Simulator game is exactly what it means. The goal of the game is to act as a trainer to an animal or person, either way it'll usually be a cute anime girl, and raise them up to be the very best of their vocation like no one ever was. The ur example of this type is usually considered to be 1991's Princess Maker, a game developed by Gynex, didn't you know, they're also game devs, that saw you adopt a war orphan to raise as your own daughter. Depending how well you raised her, she can either end up being a benevolent ruling queen, a heroic adventurer, a humble housewife, or a lady of the evening, so to speak. According to former Gainax staffer and Oda King himself, Toshio Okada, the goal behind Princess Maker was to make a game that only trains the subordinates of Nobunaga's ambition. The fact that the one you are training just so happens to be a cute anime girl is the biggest, roundest cherry on top. It wasn't before long that a small development studio cleverly named Headroom took notice and made the brilliant observation of, you know what's better than raising one girl? How about a whole group of girls? Developed by Headroom and published by Japan Home Video, 1992's Graduation took the concept of Princess Maker, placed it in a prestigious all-girls high school, and gave you the role of newly appointed unseen high school teacher Hayato Shinjo the job of guiding five problem students to, well, graduation. While the girls are said to have great potential, they are all being held back by certain flaws. Reiko is a snooty child of privilege who thinks money can solve anything, Kiyomi is your standard delinquent, Mommy was coddled by her parents resulting in her behaving more like a kindergartner than a high school student, Mika loses it every time she feels like she's not in control of the situation, and Shizuka's otherwise stellar academic record is marred by frequent absences involving a part-time job at a sex shop. The goal of the game is obvious. Help the girls to graduation by encouraging good habits like studying and getting involved in cultural events and discouraging bad habits like drinking or smoking. Graduation also stands out where, by the third year, one of the girls falls in love with you and asks for your hand in marriage, which ends up being a fail state since that means you weren't really doing your job as a teacher, Mr. Onizuka. While virtually unknown in these parts of the world, graduation really did cast a long shadow in the 90s video game scene of Japan. Not only was the game released onto almost nearly every system that could run it from PC-98 to Sega Saturn to the 3DO, not only did it spawn numerous sequels which included a new class, a marriage simulator, and a live-action remake of the first game, but it also influenced the way a lot of future media franchises that focus on a supporting cast of cute anime girls operated from that point forward. Graduation went on a massive mixed media marketing campaign, usually focused on drama CDs and radio plays involving the characters interacting with each other as if they were friends. 
It not only kept the game franchise in the spotlight long after release, but also emphasized that the selling point were the girls and their interactions with each other. Sure, each otaku might have had a favorite girl, but it's always fun to see all the girls as a unit together. This no doubt influenced a lot of future franchises, one in particular being Konami's Tokomeki Memorial who did something similar as their means of popularizing the nascent dating game genre and all that entails. Graduation really was one of the first media franchise titles to sell itself on the conceit of cute girls doing cute things. And it wasn't before long before Bandai Visual's Sea Moon OVA label came a knockin' and proposed that they take this franchise out of audio and into video. Heading up the Graduation OVA project would be Studio Fantasia. We've talked about them before on this show. You might know them as the house that Project Ego sequels built. But after that franchise wrapped at the start of the 90s, Fantasia was now settling into a phase as a Guns For Hire studio until the success of a certain gluteal focused anime. And since this was a Studio Fantasia joint, the chief director for graduation was Katsuhiko Nishijima. A surprise to be sure since this is a restrained, thoughtful slice of life anime and Nishijima's resume is… not. <laughs> But I guess that's why he ceded most of the important directing duties like storyboarding over to Takeshi Mori and Seiji Mizushima for Episode 1 and Naoto Kanda for Episode 2. These four men, I do want to give Nishijima some credit, are given a pretty thankless task of taking this gaggle of colorfully designed anime girls, have them give mostly sobering conversations about the road that lays before them, and keep it interesting. Surely the temptation to turn this into a fanservice heavy comedy must have been very strong. And that's the thing, aside from some bra shots and barely noticeable nipples in the hot spring scenes, fanservice is kept pretty minimal. And though there is some comedy and funny faces, they are all given the lightest of light touches. <laughs> because the anime is addressing topics that are very serious to the main cast. Too many jokes would cloud the personal journeys the cast goes through. That's why the overall feel of this OVA is slow. Shots will linger. Characters will have long conversations in a remote location where it feels like they are the only ones around in the world. And the environments, whether they be the pastoral mountainous countryside of the first episode or urban cityscapes of the second episode, all feel calm, almost meditative, as if the world is slowing down to give these girls time to really reflect on their time together and what happens to them next. Our director Junichi Higashi deserves all the flowers for making these environments feel solitary but welcoming. Everywhere is a place meant to ruminate on life and your friendships, giving the anime a more palpable sense of melancholy, catharsis for moving on from one phase of life to the next. In my opinion, I think this is really helped by the character designs of animation director Kazuko Tadano, who is most well known for doing the character designs for the Sailor Moon anime. She translates the original designs from the games into women who are clearly on the verge of adulthood, giving them a maturity that fits the gravity of their conversation. The only exception of course being designated comic relief mommy who can practically look like Chibiusa in between these high school seniors in some shots. But all of that can only go so far. They may be able to set the mood, but if we can't actually feel for these characters and what they are currently going through, then it's all going to be for naught. I think my exclamation at the beginning that the premise was going to have an uphill battle was flawed. To the select otaku who played the games and subsequently bought and listened to the audio drama CDs, the anime was not their first time being introduced to these girls. For those people, this anime was the capstone to the franchise thus far. But since the former two are even more niche than the anime, most of the people who would come across this anime would be pondering the following question. Why is this anime trying to make me sad over a potential friends group split up when I have just met said friends group only a half hour ago? It gets even more hectic when you realize that the two episodes this OVA only amounts to a full hour, which adds to an unenviable time limit to the proceedings. And you know what? Studio Fantasia manages to pull it off. They do a good job onboarding non-graduation stands into the mix. We have a good idea of who each of these girls are and how close their relationships are with each other. 
We even get glimpses of each of the girls' interior life with their families to show us not only more of their personalities, but also just how it contributes to their own anxieties. The best example is Kiyomi, who seems to be primed to take over her father's motorcycle business, but is wrestling with whether or not that's what she wants, or is just choosing that path to take the workload off of her sickly father. Each of the two episodes are centered around a certain anxiety about graduation. The first episode being about the friends group wondering if they will ever be able to hang out with each other like they used to after high school, and the second episode being about the future and what happens next. And to give these episodes some stakes to build around, they also have a central conflict. In the first episode, Mommy gets off of the wrong stop on the way to the Hot Springs getaway, and her friends need to find her because this anime was made before smartphones existed. <laughs> And the second episode deals a lot with Reiko realizing that her wealthiness has caused her to have no ambitions for the future, and that she may have to opt into a possible arranged marriage with one of her father's potential business partners, which naturally arouses the fear of her friends. <laughs> But each of these issues get resolved by somebody coming up and, well, not solving their anxieties actually, but just helping them hash it out. Mommy is the most nervous about losing her friends group after high school, so when she is left at the wrong stop, she strikes up a conversation with the elderly station master there, who is also planning for his own graduation, his retirement. <laughs> As for the second episode, Reiko's possible husband-to-be turns out to be a pretty young salaryman her age. But Reiko is quick to point out that this arranged marriage is ultimately her choice, and he agrees with her telling her that it is okay to not have everything figured out and that she should still explore other options while she's still young. What these two conversations boil down to is that even in important transitory moments in your life, you should strive to live in the moment. After all, your future can change on a whim, and even if you never see those friends of yours again, you will always have their memories with you. That is why you should cherish the time you have together. Some people might find the overall message pretty obvious and maybe even a little treacly, especially after all the contemplative scenery leading up to it. But me personally, I really felt something. Graduation caused me to relive my own last days of high school, even though that was almost 15 years ago. While I did know I was going to college after the summer, I had zero clue what was going to happen after I got there. And the close friends group I graduated with, we also drift apart. One I lost contact with almost immediately, another cut me off completely after a disagreement. Out of all of them, I still keep in contact with only one. But like the anime said, I still have those memories together. I still remember the last time we hung out together a week before I left for university. It was a Sunday afternoon mall trip that lasted all the way into the evening. I bought my copy of Persona 3 on that trip, at a Babbage's that is no longer there. Yeah, even though I haven't been a teenager in so long, graduation was right on the money. It's not perfect though, while it does get its overall message across in the time it has, I feel like it would have been better if it was longer, just so the moments could have gotten more time to breathe. 
especially in the second half where Reiko's plot kinda ends up swallowing everyone else's future-driven anxieties. Shizuka's self-doubt about whether she's good enough to pass the veterinary school exam gets resolved in a single conversation, and Mami has no such anxiety because her mom just signed her up for trade school. <laughs> Oh yeah, her future's so bright she's gotta wear shades. I understand why an anime like Graduation languishes in obscurity. It's based off of a PC game that never got a release outside of Japan. It feels tailor-made to a very niche audience, and the slow directing style and high school-centric subject matter might cause people to write it off as boring. But I was surprised at how much I ended up getting out of it. Even if I had no larger context to this friends group when I started researching graduation for this video, I still felt the emotions well up on me as they all went their separate ways by the end. And I'm sure you will too. But never fret. This will not be the last time we see these girls in anime form. We still have the giant robot parody they all starred in. <laughs> But that's a class reunion that's thankfully far off in the future. Let's just take comfort with the memories we've made so far.